All right, guys, well, we're talking quite a few details today on the Conso 206 RB1. Some of these fiddly little adjustments that might otherwise stop you up, we'll explain them in detail so you can get your machine sorted and sewing with a perfectly balanced stitch. Stick around, we're jumping right into it. Well, what a great example of an RB1 to do a little show and tell on. And this one, I haven't gone through at all. We're going to figure out if there's any problems with it. If you've looked at a couple industrial sewing machines, you start to immediately recognize the problems. This one has an issue I can see already with the upper thread tension assembly. So let's start there. So when this machine came to me, I could turn these knobs and really nothing would happen. They wouldn't retract or advance. And what that meant is I could make an adjustment to my upper tension and nothing would happen. So this rod, if we look at it, is actually a split threaded rod. And it's built that way so that springs and discs can be inserted over that and they're held in place correctly. But if this has been pinched together, if the two halves of this bolt have been pinched together, when you go to thread your tension assembly knob on there, nothing will happen. It won't it might advance slightly, but it won't really develop any tension. So if that's an issue for you, just use a flat blade screwdriver, splay the two halves of that rod open slightly so the threads engage again, and then you'll be back in business. You'll be able to set and test your upper thread tension. If you're unable to set the tension on that because of a mechanical issue or problem with the tensioner, it's a lot like trying to sew with your presser foot raised. Now when I have my presser foot raised, these discs become loose. There's not enough upper tension to balance out the stitch in your material. So make sure that when you start to sew, your foot is of course down, but also that the tension assembly is in good working order. Some people mistakenly grab this knob and try to adjust it as if it were an upper tension knob. It's not, this is the thread controller. It has a very important mechanism here, which is a spring. And this helps to manage the slack on the upper thread so that you can prevent shredded or torn upper thread. Let's talk about that steppage wing nut on the back of your machine that helps control the relative lift of your presser feet. This will help you make adjustments when you're going from very thin material up to bulky or thick material with heavy seams and transitions. There's a tool-free adjustment on the back of the machine. It's just a wing nut. Loosen the wing nut and move the arm up and down in this slotted way. The bottom position would be appropriate for thin material like canvas. Normally I'll run this about two-thirds of the way up and tighten that wing nut. But if you're working with particularly thick leather or bulky seams, you can run that all the way up in its groove and tighten the wing nut. Let's talk about the maintenance adjustment you can make to equalize the lift of the presser feet between the vibrating presser foot and the outer presser foot. Well, I was going to show you what it's supposed to look like with the wing nut in the high and low positions, but I see now we have something else out of adjustment. See how the middle vibrating presser foot barely lifts off the deck of the machine and then the outer foot has this big gigantic lift? And that's not correct. That's out of adjustment, and so we'll fix that now. To sort out that adjustment, put two layers of common material that you might sew, and roll the hand wheel towards you until the needle just contacts the material. Loosen this 10 millimeter bolt on the back of the machine, right next to the wing nut, and the foot should automatically go back into adjustment. And at that point, you can retighten the bolt. And now that we've made that adjustment, both the inner foot and the outer foot step nice and high. Looks much better. Now that we have that adjustment sorted, I can show you the difference between the wing nut in the low position, like this, and the wing nut adjusted for maximum steppage, like this. Now let's look at adjusting bobbin tension when necessary and how to load a bobbin. Before removing the bobbin, just make sure that these two dots roughly align on the hand wheel. That position also correlates with the take-up arm at the top position. Then you can just go ahead and pop the bobbin case out. And if your bobbin case doesn't come out easily, it's probably because your hand wheel dots aren't aligned. 
and if it's in a certain cycle of the rotation, this bobbin case opener will actually prevent you from removing or installing the bobbin case. This machine uses M style bobbins, but just check the fit of your bobbin on the bobbin winder. I don't like that fit, that's a little too loose for my liking. So just take a flat blade screwdriver and just gently splay that, see if you can get a little tighter fit. One more time and I think we'll have it. There, yeah, that's better. So the thread needs to be spooling off this way as you load your bobbin into the bobbin case. Thread needs to come back through this anti-backlash mechanism around the finger and into the little hole. Once your thread is coming through the hole, that's what will apply tension on that. Tension should be light and consistent. Now if you do need to make a little adjustment, the screw is right here. There's two screws. This small one just holds the tension finger in position. This larger one with the lip or ring around it controls the tension of the bobbin case. Think about that in terms of one eighth or one quarter turn adjustments and then retest. Leave about a six inch tail of thread coming out of your bobbin case. Again, check that the dots are aligned on your hand wheel. If you don't have dots on the hand wheel, just put the take up arm in the uppermost position and you should be able to click that bobbin case into position. Go ahead and drop the head down. It's always a good idea to hold your threads back as you start to sew. And from there you can go ahead and balance out your tension. Looks like we're a little loose on the bottom. It's nice to have different colors, top and bottom. And so if you see any red on the bottom side or your stitches are a little loose, why then you can just increase the upper tension slightly and retest. Here's the upper thread tension. Clockwise will increase the upper tension. Okay, looks like that did it. Nice tight stitches on the bottom. No loose loops and no upper thread showing. So I'm happy with that tension. If you can balance your tension in just two thin layers of leather, you know that your project will have a well-balanced stitch. Next, let's look at the common oiling points on this 206 RB1. You've got journals underneath these rubberized grommets here and here. Then you also have a slide-away plate that has a semi-automatic lubrication system. If your machine is equipped this way, go ahead and keep this felt and these wicks saturated. There's also two small felt inserts in journals along the top of the head here. And go ahead and lubricate both of those. Keep those felt areas lubricated. Another grommet that comes out. It's an oil spot there. Anywhere marked in red, of course, you want to hit with a couple drops of oil. And then we'll head to the back of the machine head and hit the linkage here. So anywhere there's a little oil well, you want to hit that. This one's not marked. These two up top are marked in red. Then there's another one down on this side that's not marked. Then take your side cover off and oil some of the internals there. This little vertical mechanism needs a drop or two of oil here. There's another linkage that's connected here and there's another oil well right there. Spot here. Another one here. Again, there's little divots on the top of the machinery. You're just lubricating the moving parts. There's one that's very deep. I won't be able to visualize it, but you'll see it. It's a little, a little machine spot on the top of an articulation. Needs a drop or two of oil there. The oil ports on the bed are well marked in red. One here. One, two, three back here. Some models only have two in this area. This particular submodel has three. And then there's two near the center of the bed. This switch here, by the way, confuses some people. This is to reset your safety clutch on the 206 RB. Don't forget to pop out this rubber grommet. There's another felt wick in there and you can saturate that with sewing machine oil. You're only using sewing machine oil, by the way, nothing else. There are four additional points up the face of the head. The bobbin winder even has its own oil port. Give that a drop of oil while you're there. There's one lonely port around the back of the machine just there. Tip the machine back and we'll check out the last few oiling spots. There's a little oil spot up here. And all these are listed in the manual. Some of them are just for the reverse mechanism. There's one down here that takes a little bit of oil. 
And then there's a main one here that's a oil reservoir. And to access that, it's a flat blade screwdriver. You'll remove this plug and go ahead and fill the reservoir with regular sewing machine oil. Regular zoom spout will do the job. Just insert the oil here and you'll see it fill at or close to a red fill line. That looks pretty good. And we'll replace that cap. So that semi-automatic oil reservoir is filled with wicks that carry the oil up and around to the hook area. If you rotate the hand wheel a little bit, there's a potential friction point right here, so a drop of oil will do you. There's a lobe that rides inside of a fork. You can lubricate that here. It's a little bit redundant because one of the spots from above the bed lubricates that spot, but it's a critical lube point. Also get a drop or two of oil on the linkage for the feed dogs just here. And the bobbin case articulation has a little oil well right there. And finally, a couple spots associated with the reverse linkage. A couple dots of oil here and just above it here. Let's quickly look how to set stitch length on this machine and a technique for perfect back tack for all you leather workers. Stitch length adjustments are really easy to make. Just twist this dial. You'll notice the lever raises up slightly. That will shorten your stitch length. If you loosen that lever, the knob will drop down. You'll get an increased stitch length and you'll see a proportional increase in your reverse stitch length. So And if you want to get a perfect back tack, drop the needle bar to bottom dead center, then roll the hand wheel towards you slightly until it raises up just a bit. Lift your reverse lever all the way to the top and then back tack from there. If your machine is set correctly, those stitches will plunk right back into the same holes. That's great if you're a leather worker. And it looks like ours are set just right. Very long stitch length, but as we came back into that in reverse, we didn't create any new holes. So it looks perfect. That's just how a machine should be set up. May not matter if you're doing blind seams for general upholstery work, but if you're doing leather work where it shows and you have a top stitch detail, this is a really nice setting to have correct. And then just a quick note on thread socks. Now, of course, you'll be using an industrial thread stand with industrial style spools where the thread is released off the top of the spool, but it's really important to use a thread sock. Let's see why. I talk about a thread sock in most of my threading videos, but what it is is just a piece of web nylon that goes over an industrial thread spool. And the idea is simple. It wraps down underneath and it covers the top just a bit and it prevents any loose loops of thread from catching on your industrial thread stand. Here's an example of a piece of thread that doesn't have a thread sock on it. If you get a little bit of loose thread, it can wrap right around that thread stand and it'll lock you up dead in the middle of a project. That'll lead to a thread break, certainly, so just prevent this problem before it starts with a simple thread sock. All right, guys, there you go. A few tidbits on the Conso 206 RB1 Industrial Walking Foot. Hope you get a chance to use one in the near future. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.